Hello everyone, Amud here from a Target Common YouTube channel and in this video tutorial, we will look at files and folders created during installation of Playwright in last video tutorial. So the first file we are going to look at is package.json. You can compare this package.json with pom.xml in a maven based project. So pom.xml in a maven project is a configuration file. Similarly, in any node.js project, we have a configuration file called package.json and this file contains a json object with multiple keys so basically this file will hold metadata about the project dependencies information scripts etc let's see few keys here so the first key is name which will hold the name of your project which is playwright installation 2 the same name you can see here as well if you want to change the name of your project then you need to edit this key. Next key is version, which will hold the information about versioning of your project. Next key is main, which is index.js. So this main key is used to define entry point file of the project. So this index.js will be executed when this package will be used in another package. Basically, we can publish this package as a npm package so that anyone can use this like we are using playwright so playwright is also a node.js project and they have packaged it as npm so that we can use it in our project another key we have scripts which can be used to define some custom commands to be run for testing building etc this keywords key can hold keywords related to your project maybe if this is automation project you can put automation or any relevant keywords author is very obvious license is also obvious description you need to put description about your project and the major key here we have is called dev dependencies under this dev dependencies we have two packages or dependencies information so when we did npm init playwright in the last video tutorial it downloaded two packages playwright slash test and type slash node and those two packages were automatically added under dev dependencies. So any package which is required only for development, we can keep those packages information under dev dependencies. But there might be some packages which are required to run your application that we need to put under dependencies key. So basically it has downloaded 1.47.1 version for playwright and 22.5.5 for types. And if you see at the beginning, they have one symbol called caret. So this version information has three parts. First part that is one is called major version. 47 is minor and one is patch. So if the playwright releases a new patch, then they might version it as 1.47.2. Or if they are releasing a minor version, then they can put 1.48.0. But if they are releasing a major version, then they need to increment the first number, which is 1. That means they need to start from 2.0.0. But if you see this caret symbol, it means it is going to download any latest version of dependency till it does not change the major version. That means this caret will allow this project to download 1.48.0 or 1.47.2 but it will not download 2.0.0 the second file we are going to look at is package test log.json so this file is also generated when you do npm install and this is used to ensure consistent version of dependencies and sub dependencies across different environments in package.json we are using these packages information with caret symbol means we are allowing this project to download any minor and patch version of dependencies. So when we run npm install, it is going to resolve this dependencies and will download as per rules defined under dev dependencies or dependencies key. And then it will create a package test log.json. And here it will put the exact version information about the packages. For example, if you see this playwright slash test here they have downloaded 1.47.1 1 
Suppose a new patch version released 1.47.2. In the package.json, we don't need to mention that explicitly, but when you do npm install, automatically it will download the latest patch version. And then package-log.json file will be updated. So for every dependencies, you can see JSON object like playwright slash test. We have types and it also contains information about sub dependencies. That means one package might use another packages internally. So all those details you can find here. So after the first execution of npm install, when you do it again, then it will look for package-log.json file. If it is found, then it is going to download the exact version. Otherwise, it will resolve the dependencies. Now let's see a folder called node underscore modules. You can compare this node underscore modules with .m2 for Maven projects. So whatever dependencies we mention in packet.json, those will be downloaded and kept inside node underscore modules. It includes sub dependencies also. Now we have one file called playwright.config.ts. TS stands for TypeScript. It is exporting some default configuration like test directory, which is slash test. So when we were installing Playwright, it asked us where you want to keep your test file. And we selected the default option, which is slash test. So basically, when you run the Playwright test, it is going to look for the test files in this directory. Then it provides another property called fully parallel. It will decide whether you want to run the test in parallel or no. You can also configure number of retries, how many workers you want. That means if you want to run in parallel, then how many tests you can run in parallel. And here we have reporter, which will say what kind of report you are going to generate. So don't worry about these fields because I am going to cover everything with examples. If you come down, we have one projects array. So we know that playwright by default runs test on Chromium, Firefox and WebKit, which is not your regular browsers like Google Chrome, Firefox or Edge. That's why Playwright downloads their own browsers and run tests on those browsers by default. So here they have defined for Chromium, Firefox and WebKit. And if you come down, these codes are commented, but you can see you can run your test against mobile Chrome, mobile Safari or already installed browsers like Microsoft Edge, Google Chrome. Now let's go to test folder and if you expand it, here we have one example test. So first statement is simple import statement and here they have two tests. You can compare this with add test annotation of testng or junit. So here they are providing the title for the test and then it is lambda expression. And here it loads the URL and expect the title should be playwright. Don't worry about the syntax as of now because I will cover everything step by step. First one will check the title and uh, second one will check get started link. They also provided one folder called test-examples and if you expand it, we have another demo to do. And here you can see so many different tests and this is useful if you want to know about basics commands and how to write your test. Let's see last file which is dot git ignore and so when you try to commit and push changes to your remote repository then these folders will be excluded. Now let's see how can we run this example test. So as of now I'm going to use terminal to run the test but we have other ways also which I will cover later. Let's click on these three horizontal dots and select terminal then new terminal. So to run the test we have simple command npx playwright test. So this npx is a command line tool which is included in npm. And this is generally used to execute Node.js packages directly without installing them globally. Now hit enter. So you can see it is showing running six tests using six workers. And it did not open any browser and all six are passed. So first question, how we have total six tests. So if you see playwright config dot TS within the projects we have Chromium, Firefox and WebKit and it is going to run the test from this test folder. In this spec file we have two tests. So these two tests will be executed in all three browsers that means Chromium, WebKit and Firefox. So three into two total six and by default it is going to run in headless mode that means you will not see any browser execution. If you want to see the report it is giving information about npx command which will help you to see the report. So let's copy this and paste here. So it is npx playwright show dash report. Hit enter and here report is opened. If you go to your test then 
we have two tests here. First title is has title, second one get started link. The same details will be printed here. So you can see first two were executed in Chrome, then next two were executed in Firefox and last two were executed in WebKit and how much time it took, but it will also generate the report which you can find under Playwright hyphen report folder or basically open this HTML into browser. So copy path, come here and paste it. You will see the same report. When you run this command, it actually created a server and showing the report there. So you need to press Ctrl C so that it will stop server and you will come out from that. Now if you want to run your test in non headless mode, that means you want to see the browsers, then you can write npx playwright test dash dash headed. Hit enter. Now you can see it is opening browsers and executing the test. And this time also it used six workers. So that's all in this video. If you have any doubt, please comment on this video. If you really like my videos, please like, comment, subscribe and share with others. Thank you everyone.